back to News Geelong and now it's time for sport with the one and only Nathan Curry. Thank you Eliza and good evening everyone. As you can tell I'm not in the studio tonight, I'm out at the Geelong Harness Racing Club for the launch of the SEW Eurodrive Geelong Rocket here on October 9. It just seemed to be lost in May because there was no good lead in event and, uh, and I suppose it was a, a, attracting a good class of, of horse but now it will attract a really, really really good class of horse because the winner on the 9th of October now will be exempt into the Legends Mile in the following month. So it's a good lead up to that and it's a good incentive for people wanting to get into the Legends Mile. Will the format of the race change now that it's a different date, different format or how will it all take place on the October the 9th? No, it's certainly the same format, over 1,609 metres. Uh, uh, the, uh, the track record is 154.3. We would anticipate the track record could be broken that night by something like Smoke em Up. Okay, and, uh, and there's an, an incentive of $1,500 if, uh, if the winner does break the track record. Geelong has long been known as a great satellite track and event, and uh, SEW Eurodrive, we have a very wide and varied customer base, and we have some very, very good uh, clients out in Geelong. In uh, Des Monday and Son, who have been a fantastic supporter of SEW over the years, and you know Ford and Alcoa and companies like that. So, I think you know, if we can put something back into the local Geelong community, it's it's very fitting because we benefit from you know some very good companies in in the area as well. Harness racing in Geelong isn't strong, and Geelong's our second biggest city. Uh, I live, I'm a local, and uh, this is the best kept secret out here. I mean, it's a fantastic day. We've got a great committee. And the opportunity to get a flagship race, uh, hopefully we'll attract people. And once people come and see Harness Racing in Beckley Park, then uh, you know, they might come back and, and be regulars. All right, Mr Mayor, I saw you wearing the Geelong Rocket hat before. You're obviously keen on the idea of it moving to October. Why will it be good for Geelong? Oh, look, October the 9th, a great time of the year. It's, uh, you know, to put a, have, a, have a speed night on on uh, October the 9th. Uh, all uh, races are over 1,600 odd metres. Uh, you know, it'll be great for Geelong. Uh, you know, we have Redwood Day, which is all trotters up at Meriburra, you know, so uh, we have uh, a number of other uh, different... Uh, different things that go on. We've got Ballarat which is uh, a leader in uh, in the harness racing in Victoria, you know, uh, we've got the new uh, track out at Melton which is uh, great but uh, when people think of speed and think of uh, harness racing and think of October they'll think of Geelong so it's got to be a great thing. Next up in sport tonight, News Geelong's man at the Geelong and District Football League, Cal Lowther, caught up with Werribee Central's coach David Leach after their loss to Bellpost Hill last Saturday. Dave, you were competitive for the first quarter and a half and Looked like it was going to be a bit of a shootout, but in the end, a side just uh, maybe through just lack of fitness or just weren't prepared to work hard enough, just couldn't get in front on the scoreboard. Yeah, probably a bit of both, maybe, Cal. Um, yeah, oh, mate, they were great. They're a good football side, and um, we thought we would go out and match up pretty well on them today, and um, we gave ourselves a red hot tip the chance. And, um, and um, yeah, we've had a couple of boys come back, and um, yeah, fitness might take pay a little bit of a part, but if you don't play cannibal football on a um, uh, in a final, mate, you're not going to win a final. And yeah. um, we played a cannibal football during parts of it, uh, but didn't do it for the whole game. And so therefore, um, you get beaten by a fair, fair margin. Uh, you obviously did a bit of homework. You had a couple of new tactics today. How do you think they went? Oh, particularly the Symes, the uh, Pilkington on Symes. Yeah, probably not as good as I thought it could have, um, to be honest with you. Like, um, I thought our matchups through the backline were okay. Um, I thought um, the backline done pretty well. Um, their inside 50s weren't any greater than ours, but their delivery inside 50 was greater than ours. Um, they used the ball a lot better than us, mate. And um, they were able to find that spare bloke, and we weren't accountable. Um, Pilko, Pilko, like, obviously that um, was something different that we tried. Um, we thought it worked to a certain extent. Um, but, like, there's no doubt. And there's no rocket sign. It's like NATO wasn't 100%, and um, he needs probably a week um, with a, a couple of physio sessions to get him back up. And um, it's been a long year. So we needed to use him forward. Um, if he was 100%, I would have probably done the same thing early anyway. Um, so you've got to try things, mate, in the final. Yeah. And just finally, how will you go about training this week, heading up to uh, the game against whoever wins tomorrow between Bunnyburn and East? Will you just uh, you know, kill the players on Tuesday night, or will you give them a nice, just ease them because of the fact that you got a few injuries? Nice 5k time trial or something, Kel. But um, yeah, no, we'll um, 
Well, um, we'll go into the week the same as we do each other week, mate. We 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 think we've, we've put ourselves in a position to get a double chance because we we we, we dead set deserve it, and um, we still have belief in each other. Um, we didn't have a great three quarters today or two and a half quarters, and um, we we're beaten by a better side. We weren't accountable enough, so we'll regroup on um, Tuesday. We'll have a good session. Um, we'll get back up and about on Thursday, and then we'll come back up here next Saturday uh, for a red hot dip to put ourselves in a grand final. Um, we've 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 put a new group together this year. Yeah, we've had our injuries, but there's no excuses. You need to win a final, and. Um, there's no doubt that we'll have everything focused for next Saturday. Thanks for that, Cal. And finally tonight in Sport News, Geelong caught up with Geelong Falcons coach Paul Hood to talk about his side's finals campaign. Uh, the final system in the TSC Cup this year is a final 12, which is pretty novel. Uh, 12 of the 13 sides were invited. The first four sides actually played in a qualifying series on the weekend, just for seeding positions really. The bottom eight sides had a knockout. And from here on in, there's eight teams left, and it's knockout each week. A bit like a tennis tournament is probably the best way to describe it. So, yeah, cutthroat each week, but uh, great pressure environment for the players and, I guess, survival of the fittest in the end. Why is there 12 teams competing in the finals? Well, uh, part of the TSC Cup philosophy is to expose as many players as they can to the highest level of footy we can find and give the AFL recruiters a good idea to get a form line before the draft. So that's the reason they have lots of guys playing in the finals. But... Um, you know, we're all about providing opportunity for our players too, so to guarantee an extra couple of weeks is, is really good for everyone at the Falcons and the TSA Cup in general. Well, you had a good win against the Northern Knights on the weekend. How did you view the game? Really pleased with the result and the scoreboard at the end, obviously, but the commitment for our group was just to be really hard, really competitive for four quarters. It's the first time we are able to do that in a while, and we felt that uh, our running ability and our power around the ball wore down the opposition. So, yeah, great result and obviously a really happy coach. How will, you, how will you and the boys be preparing for your next match against the Calder Cannons? Well, this time of the year, a lot of the focus at the club's on rehab. Guys making sure their skills are right, but no need for any more fitness work. We're just making sure that we're as well prepared as we can be for the weekend. The game plan's pretty much in place by now that you'd hope, so a few adjustments because of the opposition, but really we're just going to focus on getting our bodies as well as they can be for the weekend. Uh, just another question for uh, viewers' interest. How is Falcons training different to regular club training? With regular club, club training, I suppose, you're trying to do everything, you know, fitness and all those sort of things. But here at the Falcons, we see our players a lot. We've got a lot of video instruction as well. All our games are filmed and every sort of stat you can imagine is tagged by champion data. So there's a lot of teaching, a lot of learning, and also uh, some game sense drills and activities to go with the fitness and skills and weights that the players do. Yeah. Finally, Paul, will you have a full list to choose from this week? We're fortunate to have a full list. We had Jaden Pitt missing on the weekend, who's had a fantastic season for us. So Jaden's available for selection this week at this stage. So, yeah, full list. Uh, first time for a long time and uh, pretty exciting at selection tomorrow night, I think. Thanks for that, Hoodie. We'll be sure to keep an eye on your boys in the finals campaign. That's it for sport tonight. I'll be back on Friday, but until then, it's back to you, Eliza. Thanks, Nathan. With today being the first day of spring, there is no better person to bring us this week's weather than Lani Salathiel. Is there any sunshine coming our way, Lani? Thanks, Eliza. Well, it's not looking like there's much sun in store for the week, but being the first day of spring, hopefully the weather is warming up just a tad. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, a partly cloudy day with some isolated showers around, a top of 14. For Friday, we're looking at a partly cloudy day, some patchy morning frost fog, inland, isolated showers during the morning and some light winds, a maximum of 15. For Saturday the weekend, a cloudy day, some areas of rain developing around Geelong, a maximum of 17. And for Sunday, a cloudy day, areas of rain again, a maximum of 16. For next week, Monday, a cloudy day, some scattered showers again and a maximum of 14. And today we had a cloudy day. There was patchy rain this morning but easing uh, this afternoon. We had a minimum of 9 and a maximum of 15. So until Friday for the first day of spring, that's the weather forecast. Thanks, Eliza. Thanks, Lani. And thank you for joining us on News Geelong. If you have any stories that you would like heard, jump onto our new website, www.newsgeelong.com.au. We look forward to your company yet again on Friday night at 6.30. I'm Eliza Houghton, and together with all the team here at News Geelong, we wish you a great night.